right. So we uh, we were talking about Bloomingburg. Um, when I already went over a half hour, I was like, you know, a video more than a half hour. Very few people are going to watch. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I don't think most people are going to watch a video that's more than 90 seconds. But <coughs> you know, and, and it's part of. Uh, <coughs> although now a lot of my videos get demonetized or just randomly now they have these, uh, these robots that demonetize videos that question the norm basically anything of the mainstream media narratives um, I just here I'm just discussing things I'm not preaching I'm not pushing any agenda Mostly, I'm just fascinated about a lot of these things on the sociological level. So, um, we were talking about Bloomingburg. Now, they were brilliant this year. How they... How they did their block vote. You know, I saw... So I just want to say something. I saw a tweet yesterday from Lieber Schmelzer. So, it goes on side. And Lieber... I think he's becoming more and more of a, an intellectual. Now he's going to college and stuff. And he, he's thinking a little bit deeper and things. So, uh, Riblipa, he said, you know, he goes to a rabbi, and he spells rabbi R-A-B-I-E or something like this. I, I, I guess spelling he didn't learn in college. I don't know, but... Um, Riblipa, he, uh, he said, you know, he goes to the rabbis for uh, for Jewish law, not not who to vote for, but who to vote for. He follows his his God, but that's in a way he's really feeding into a, a major lie. Rabbis don't tell anybody who to vote for, and it's really wrong for him to say that because it's an issue with the Johnson Amendment and things, and it's not true. Meaning, if <laughs> if it was a violation of the Johnson Amendment, and it was true. All right, that's one thing. But the fact of the matter is, they are compliant with the Johnson Amendment, and it's not true that the rabbis are telling people who to vote for. Um, it's Askonim, you know, independent people, you know, political people from the community who are really involved in who to vote for. Now, sometimes they will bring candidates to get a blessing from a rabbi, but in general, the candidates from both sides will go get blessings, sometimes from the same rabbi, because the rabbi is not endorsing a candidate by wishing his blessing. It's, you know, for the candidate, it's maybe a photo op. Um, now, in Bloomingburg, where you don't really have a rub there, you know, who's involved, you know, I don't think Satmareba from, from Williamsburg is deeply involved in these type of things, and also, I don't think the candidates are going to him for a bracha, I mean, uh, really, to be honest, they should be going to Ibzaidl for a bracha, he's uh, the Nadverner Rebbe from Bloomingburg, is a Dach and Grace and uh, <laughs> I hope, you know, someday he establishes a very strong Rebbe Vista because he deserves it. He's a he's a very Choshev man and he and he can, can oftina Sach I, I always tell him, you know, if he will go to like five towns or something for Shabbos, make a make a tish, he would become a very popular Rebbe. But um, you know he, he has to learn how to do that. And then he has Parnosa because at Mitchensich he, he lives very much Bedachkas he doesn't have Parnosa, and uh, so you will need to spell sign for Zaya Groyser Rebbe, Zaya Chushvin Gaman. Anyway, and I get to and I get to Chava. Anyway, the um, what I was saying is the brilliance of how. Bloomingburg did their block vote this year. 
the genius. And these are things I've been saying for a long time. First of all, they hid from the public. They didn't tweet out anything saying these are the candidates we're supporting because they would have lost support, unfortunately, um, if it was known that the Hasidic community was supporting. You now, people are upset that Steve Newhouse was using quote-unquote fear tactics by seeing that uh, his opponent, I don't remember what her name is, was having meetings with Hasidic Jews. But the thing is, it wouldn't, it, it's, I don't blame Steve Newhouse. He is just, you know, feeding into the mores of the community in general. I mean, the question is, why isn't Steve Newhouse meeting with his own constituents, the members of the Hasidic community? It's not about making a deal with the devil. It's about, these are people who live in your county. You know, and the thing is, maybe he did. I don't know. And if he did, he probably had to hide it because there is a certain element, not everybody, but there is a certain element that if they know that the Hasidic, that in, <coughs> in upstate New York, if they know that the Hasidic community is supporting a particular candidate, that will cause them to lose votes. You know, we saw this in... in um, we were trying to help T.J. Brawley in, uh, in Sullivan County, the town of Thompson. And, uh, and, and the word kind of, you know, Bill Reber kind of got the word out uh, that, you know, he figured out, he, he did some math. Um, and I think that really hurt T.J. Brawley in the end, really, you know, I mean, because at that point, the community is not strong enough. Now, the same thing was true in Bloomingburg. That's why they were very wise to keep their block vote secret, although I, it was pretty obvious that whatever candidates were running for, um, for rural heritage party were not going to get the Hasidic vote. Um, you know, I think that kind of goes without saying. So, you know, but, but with these type of discussions, you know, this is what, what we have to look into, meaning, you know, what exactly is going on here. Um, so the fact that they kept their vote more or less secret, uh, who they were supporting, that really helped their candidate to win, which they were able to get. There was one candidate they were working for, um, but they're they're not strong enough yet to stage a write-in campaign. So, like everything was done with tremendous brilliance, with a real uh, understanding of political science, um, and it really. Uh, and now, now that they did that, now they've established themselves as a block vote that does matter in the community and can make coalitions um, in order that they should be treated fairly because they're not asking for anything uh, any different than anybody else. You know, they're following all the rules and everything. You know, I mean, the question is now, like, there's a development starting in Chester. So, you know, Bloomingburg was built, you know, the... The, the, the narrative goes that, you know, it was more or less in secret, you know, what the intentions might have been, even though it initially really wasn't the initial intentions, just things changed because of the, the economy and things like that. Um, so it really wasn't like that, but, but once, the, you know, there was an interest, it was kept more or less quiet. In Chester, they're much, they're totally open about it. Now let's see is that going to get them more, you know, because the claim is, oh, if you weren't so secretive about it, you know, the thing is, I don't really believe that, that, you know, I think, you know, they, they probably would have had more problems if they were open about it, but, but let's see how this goes in Chester, that it's much more open, 
is there still going to be the same opposition? I can't imagine there won't be. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes about. Um, but uh, the way this was handled in Bloomingburg was brilliant. And also the fact that they went out and voted at all. This was something I've been saying for a long time. Don't just go to the village elections. Make sure you show up at every election to show that you're really here. Um, and take away the lies that the media have been saying. Um, all right. Um, so we, we covered... Well, we didn't really cover, but we discussed uh, this palm tree story. And I can see now it's a signed town of Bloomin' Grove. We're going to have a signed town of palm tree. Um, so we, we talked about this palm tree story. We talked about Bloomingburg. Didn't really cover either of those totally. There's more what to talk about. Um, but what about... Um, You know, the, the, uh, some other elections. The convention. I voted yes for the convention. I kind of did so to be a gadfly. I mean, yes, I voted across the row Republican. The only candidate who I really mattered, um, you know, that I voted for, unfortunately lost. Um, and I think part of that was because the, the Democrats managed to get on the conservative line. And that really threw him for a loop. He didn't manage to get on the conservative line. I would imagine if he would have gotten on the conservative line, it would have helped him. Um, I, it's strange to me how you have Democrats on the conservative line. Um, and the Republican couldn't get on the conservative line. He had to make his own his own line. Because uh, I usually, even though I'm a registered Republican so I can vote in Republican primaries, I tend to prefer the conservative party in an, as an idea. Um, but when I see how you know the Democrats are running on the conservative line, it's kind of strange to me. It, it's, it kind of throws me for a loop. And I'm, I'm not going to vote on the conservative line uh, for a Democrat, you know, I mean, certain cases in local elections, I would consider voting a Democrat, but generally not. Um, so I voted across the line Republican, many of which were the same that we were voting for, that Bloomingburg gave their block vote for. So I was, in a sense, at least on the county level, um, participating together with, uh, with the Republican, with with the, uh, the Bloomingburg block vote, um, and then uh, so for town supervisor, he was running unopposed. He's been there for a long time now, Danny Sturm. I don't, I don't have a problem with him personally. I just would like to maybe see some change. So I generally. You know, don't like to vote for incumbents. I mean, I mean, Rita Sheehan. You know, that's a different story. You know, she's a you know good friend of ours and whatever. And Danny Sturm, I have nothing against him personally, and uh, I, I congratulate him on the re-election. But I'll be honest, there was a, a sign for a write-in candidate, and I and that's what I did. And the same thing, I voted when when uh, Judy Maidenbaum, even though probably Danny Sturm might be better than Judy Maidenbaum. I did vote for Judy Maidenbaum. It was kind of fun to vote for the Fat Lady Party. Um, and I forgot, but there was someone else who ran against. I think that there was someone else running that I didn't want to maybe Moose. Yeah, I, I think I voted for Danny over Moose, but just to be honest. I mean, I have nothing personal against any of them, which is the... <coughs> now, um... I was thinking of writing in Alan Scott, but uh, 
because we really miss him. But uh, instead, I, I wrote in, there was someone, I don't even know who it was, I wrote them in, and then on the legislator, um, Mr. Crumley told me to vote for him, just him, and not vote for any, any of the other two, so like they would each lose a vote, essentially, and it would help him if I didn't vote for one of the others, but the same thing as if I put in a write-in, essentially. That's essentially how that works. Uh, I actually, I wrote myself in. <laughs> Uh, for uh, <coughs> for legislator, and, and I am thinking of running, but uh, some point in the future, <coughs> I mean, it's nice, just, you know, you get a pension and everything after. Now, on the back, we had three, um, three referendums that were, I, I think all three were statewide, you know, obviously, like, the Monroe one, which was the fourth one, that was only in Monroe, not even all of Orange County, I don't think. It was just in the town of Monroe. Um, so, uh, the first one was the convention. I was just kind of being a gadfly voting yes. I, I was pretty sure it was going to lose. Well, even though I had heard rumors that there was support for it, and that it, was, it might win, but what I heard in the end is that it lost by like 80%. I mean, this is just something that comes up every 20 years, and, you know, it's just an automatic thing. The second one was taking away the pensions from, you know, basically talking like uh, uh, Shelly Silver, and, you know, I think Shel Shelly Silver he suffered enough, his wife suffered enough, um, I don't know if it, it'll affect his pension, but like, it's talking about people in the future, perhaps. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, but uh, even though I feel Shelly Silver got what he deserved, really, for voting <laughs> as an Orthodox Jew to vote for redefinition of marriage, that's really a, a big avla. That's much worse than whatever he got quote-unquote arrested, convicted for, which really the things that he got convicted for were just nonsense. That had, I don't understand what any of that had to do, how any of that is illegal, what he did, and there, it was just more of a witch hunt. And there's, there was some anti-Semitism involved too there, I think. Uh, even though I, don't, I didn't like any of Shelley Silver's uh, policies, and, and uh, I really, you know, opposed him politically, I mean, I, I met him once or twice in person, he came into the pizza shop, uh, so uh, he, he had a house near the pizza shop where he used to work, um, so I'm kind of happy that he's out of the assembly, and that he's not the head of the assembly anymore, and I'm actually kind of happy that he got arrested, even convicted, um, this way at least he has some, you know, I'm talking as a matter of Rachmanis, because hopefully that should be a kapora for him, so he shouldn't have to pay in Arlem Haba for voting for the redefinition of marriage, <clears throat> because I think that's probably one of the worst things any Orthodox Jew ever did, you know, in, in, the, in the last, you know, 50 years, you know. Um, and it's a big Chil Hashem. Um, so, you know, at least he's getting punished. Baha'i Alma, Baloi Ba'alma Dase, he's, you know, he's, he's getting punished in this world and not in the next world for, for that tremendous, tremendous Chil Hashem. And hopefully that should be enough, even though usually Chil Hashem. It's, it's not enough, but uh, uh, hopefully the uh, Kodesh Baruch Hashem Rachman is, but that being said, I felt there's also, there's also a place for Achmonis. Um, you know, his wife and family shouldn't have to suffer, and he shouldn't have, you know, he had a lot of legal fees and everything, so um, he's an old man, and, you know, he shouldn't have to suffer as far as losing his pension and everything, but I don't know if it's going to affect him or it's just affecting people in the future. If it just affects people in the future, hopefully that'll be like a deterrent, you know, against... Uh, against abuse, but I'm also afraid that something like this could be 
abused as well that people will just scapegoat people they don't like so they'll lose their pension and things like that so um, I voted no on that and but yes one also I think by like 80 percent number two number three I, I heard is very close I voted yes on number three and I heard yes one but it, I hear it's it's not fully in yet uh, or last what I checked last night I didn't check this morning yet um, I didn't check the uh, judge races and things uh, although maybe I'll you know probably check those you know when I get to work or something you know like in, in the Bronx you know so but you know with the first two referendums I was kind of being a gadfly um, the third one Whatever I, I think I, I I don't have a problem with development or using land, you know, even you know the, whatever they're banking out the land. I don't know what happened with that one. Um, now on the national and now on the, well, there's no national. There were a few congressmen, but whatever special elections, but um, on the more f bigger you know, uh, elections, you know, Bill de Blasio, I mean, I think part of what helped him was that there were two more or less bigger people running against him, you know, sizable, if it was just one, he might have, uh, he, he might have done a little worse, I don't know, I mean, Bill de Blasio is an interesting fellow, he certainly has good relations with our community, with our communities, um, but I'm kind of more interested in what's good for New York City as a whole, as opposed to what's just good for Orthodox Jews, and I think he's really bad for New York City as a whole, His, and, uh, you know, but he, he was smart enough to pick battles, I mean, he's a politician, um, and, uh, and and I think we're going to regret that in the future, you know, teaming up with him. But again, we had no choice. He was going to win with or without us, and that's that's why. And that's you know, I, when I say us, I mean I, I don't live in New York City, so it's not really I don't really have a horse in this game. But New York City, you know, being mayor of New York City is 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 a big deal. You know, it's. Um, it's one of the most powerful positions in America, really. It's it's probably, you know, I mean, there are several states that, being the governor of those states, you're less powerful than being the, the mayor of the city of New York. You know, I mean, the story goes that uh, Mayor LaGuardia approached the League of Nations and said that he wanted to... Uh, to send a delegate, uh, a diplomat, for uh, for New York City into to the League of Nations, if if the if the country wasn't going to send, the United States wasn't going to send a diplomat to, to the League of Nations. Uh, he wanted to send one from the city. And they said, well, you're not a country, you're a city. He said, yeah, but my city is bigger than the whole country of Luxembourg. Uh, and a few other countries that are in the League of Nations that were like, well, that's tough. Luxembourg is a country and New York City is a city. And just because New York City is bigger than Luxembourg, you're still the mayor of a city. You're not president of a country um, or even the governor of a state, even though, again... You know, New York City is, you know, bigger bigger than, uh, you know, has, has 20 times the population of, of Wyoming, you know, or Montana or whatever, you know. So, um, so you know, as the governor of Wyoming or Montana, well, this, this guy here has Pat Paulson for president and Godzilla for president. I... I don't think Godzilla was born here, so uh, I don't. Maybe he could be the governor of California if he would uh, if he would move here and become a citizen. But uh, 
he could not be the president because he, he, he wasn't naturally born in, in the United States. As far as I know, you know, maybe he came from the United States to Japan. I mean, certainly part of him came from the United States, uh, something that President Truman uh, delivered. Um, so maybe that could count him as a, as a naturally born American citizen, uh, part of DNA or something. Um, Pat Paulson is still alive? I don't know. He always used to run for president. I don't know. If, I don't know what happened. I remember he used to go on Nick at Night. And, um, what they, they call it a perennial candidate. I, I, people don't know, Gracie Allen ran for president of the surprise party, you know, and she would have been a much better president than Hillary Clinton. And she, I think she got about like half a million votes, uh, Gracie. Uh, so, uh, she would have been better than Donald Trump too, but, uh, but I, I'm still very happy that we have Donald Trump. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, these two gubernatorial races where Democrats won were essentially a referendum on Donald Trump. Now, these are both states that Hillary Clinton won, first of all. I mean, really, um, New Jersey obviously was not a referendum on Donald Trump. New Jersey was a referendum on Chris Christie, <laughs> you know, and so, so they, they didn't take his lieutenant governor, and New Jersey usually is a democratic state, but sometimes with the governorship, they go back and forth, you know, they had Christy Todd Whitman, um, you know, my wife always says, oh, if she was running for president, she would vote for her, you know, even though she's a Republican, you know, I mean, I, I, I usually vote for Republican, and my wife usually votes some kind of third party or something, but, and, <laughs> so, um, so we'll see how that goes in, in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, in New Jersey, but again, that has nothing to do with Donald Trump, and, and people are fooling themselves with they think, and the same thing, really, in Virginia, Virginia, they had a Democrat governor already. What all that means in, in Virginia is that Northern Virginia is having a larger and larger population and is able to skew the, the elections on the, on the state level. I mean, I lived in Virginia for close to five years, four and a half years, five years. So, you know, I know some things about Virginia. I still have a warm place in my heart for Virginia. But it's true, Northern Virginia is really just an extension of the swamp. And, uh, and if, if you look at the map of Virginia, generally, you know, just, you know, the city of Richmond and, and Northern Virginia and maybe some of the Tidewater area, that's where you're going to get, you know, the bigger Democrat turnout and everywhere else is Republican, but because those places are less densely populated and, you know, this is uh, really essential, you know, this is like uh, what Rush Limbaugh was talking about some years ago about how grants for lesbian farmers or something that Obama was pushing. And, and the purpose of that was to change the demographic of rural America um, to, uh, to help the Democratic Party. I mean, you know, it's interesting to me. You know, I, I, I spoke the other, the other yesterday. I was talking about this guy who was harassing me about a man, a woman, I don't know who it was, claimed to be a woman, I didn't really think it was a man, but who was harassing me over educating people about the laws pertaining to serving as an officiant in Pennsylvania 
and someone said, well, why are you blackballing ULC, Universal Life Church? And I said, I'm not blackballing them. I'm just explaining the laws. If you want to um, do weddings and you were ordained by Universal Life Church, you can open your own church and you're good. And good. But like the thing is, is everybody fights against their competition that way. And I, you know, yes, yes, I heard Rush Limbaugh talking, and maybe it was, I think it was yesterday, maybe it was Monday, he was talking about, you know, the competition between Apple and, and other smartphones and things, and, uh, you know, people trying to fearmonger people away from the face recognition technology of the new iPhone 10. and I, 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 I'm an Android person, I like to keep things simple, I'm not a... I don't like fancy stuff or expensive stuff. You know, I, I just buy the cheapest phone I can get. I have a need for a smartphone basically because it's my GPS and it works much better. The smartphones work much, much better than any, you know, Tom Tom GPS that you buy in the store. Um, plus, I make these videos and, and for my business, the wedding business and things. Um, That's why I have it, you know. But whatever we, do. but I don't need anything fancy like an iPhone or anything. I'm, I'm very, very happy with with my Android phone. Um, even though it's been slow recently and things, but whatever. I I don't need a fast phone either. I'm happy to have a slow phone. Now. talking about, you know, so let's uh, go back to, so, and, and anyway, he was talking, and then what Rush Limbaugh said was, you know, he doesn't like it when people are dishonest, he's like, he understands that businesses, they fight their competition, and then that's what competition is about, that's what capitalism is about, but he doesn't like when people lie, and the thing is here, I'm telling the God honest truth, and I'm not telling people don't, if you hired someone from Universal Life Church, I'm not telling you don't work with them, I'm telling you go get a, a self-uniting license, you know, in which case you don't need this person, you could get, you could do it yourself, but this, this person is really just as good as any friend that you have, but you want to hire them because they're a professional or whatever, you know, that's fine, I'm not discouraged, but I just don't want you to turn around and find out that you're not legal married according to the laws of Pennsylvania, you know, and if I wasn't serving a congregation in some capacity, you know, that's one reason why, like, I always say if I, I'm only moving somewhere else in this area, if I either open, if either a shul hires me to be their rabbi, or if I open my own shul, um, and I considered that in Bloomingburg, but in the end I decided, you know, I really don't want to move, my wife doesn't want to move. I do what she says, um, but for this specific reason that I I want to legally have the right to perform any marriage I want to uh, in in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So, all right, we're over the half hour mark. Uh, I, probably, I missed half of Glenn Beck already. This is a nice bumper. This is a nice uh, license plate here, Zadie Six Thirteen. That's that's very nice. Uh, should have a lot of nachas, uh, this Zadie. And he, he looks like a pretty young Zadie. Uh, right now he's behind me. Um, so, uh, I wish, well, I'm going to stay in this thing. Wish a lot of nachas to Zadie613 over there. And thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, we're over, well over the half hour. Um, this sound like if, if I had call in, is there a way to make call, live call ins on the phone with the YouTube with the recording? That would be awesome. You know, if we do a live call in show while I'm driving to work. The thing is, usually when I'm driving is when I don't have reception. So, uh,
it would probably make it a little bit more interesting, you know, Rabbi Meza, he's doing great with his, uh, with his call-ins, um, you know, those aren't video calls, those are generally, uh, you know, just recording the calls and then making videos, all right, well, thank you for watching, God bless, please like, share, and subscribe, and, uh, I'll probably be making either today or tomorrow, the uh, the video for the uh, for the Shabbos morning service. Um, so I want to talk to the people who are there at the service. What did they want out of the service? Um, do they want more davening? Do they want more singing? Or do they just want a sermon? I, I'm interested to find that out. Uh, although they're probably not watching this. Um, so it's something I want to discuss. I want to find out who shows up and what kind of service they want. If they're happy with it. Alright. Well, God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. And comment. And uh, let's continue the discussion. Um, uh, one other, I guess a few other things. I, I was excited to read about a Sikh mayor. I, I love learning about the Sikhs and the... A lot of respect for, for the Sikh faith and for Sikh people. They're, they're people who really live up to their faith. And um, it's not really the first Sikh mayor, but the first turban wearing Sikh mayor. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. Um, and, the, and the thing is, you know, nobody should pretend that Donald Trump is somehow upset by having a having a Sikh mayor or a transgender mayor or member of uh, state legislature or things like that. Like, I mean, all of these things really don't matter. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's like I was listening to Glenn Beck yesterday. I want to listen to him today. I want to hear. He was saying, you know, he was very happy that America was able to vote for a black president. The only thing was he didn't like this particular one, you know, but it's not because of the color of his skin, but he's happy that we are able to get to this post-racial time. If anybody, you know, if you have time to listen to yesterday's Glenn Beck program, it's really worth listening to. He's talking to an African-American fellow, um, about race and America and everything, and this is a very important discussion, uh, very, uh, and, and, and I applaud Glenn Beck for, you know, reaching out all branches and trying to build bridges like that, and I wish we could do that on our, in our local communities with the Hasidic communities and so forth, um, and I've tried to, and I've, I've faced a lot of backlash, not from my community, but from the, from the secular community, from the non-Hasidic community, uh, people trying to get me banned from speaking in the college. Um, so, uh, but I, I like to try to work something else out again like this. Um, What else? Uh, but you know, I, I, you know, but still, it is. I mean, I don't, you know, it is certainly a big deal to have someone from a minority, religious minority, who wears very clear religious garb. Um, you know, serve a position like that in a in a heterogeneous community, you know, it's not like this is like a Sikh community, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal to have a Hasidic mayor of, of Curious Joel, you know, or, or New Square, you know, it's not a big deal to have a, uh, really, even to have a Hasidic judge, as wonderful as that is to have a Hasidic woman as a judge, in Borough Park, that's not like a Hafla Fella type thing, you know, um, Although, 
very proud of of, of Rookie. Uh, what's her last name? But uh, I remember I met her once. But uh, we're trying that she should bring her her uh, kids. She's reaching out to to make a shop atone by us or something. Um, But it, it, it is a, a wonderful thing, and and, uh, and the same thing. I'm very very excited that there is a Sikh mayor of I think it was Hoboken. I don't remember where it was. Um, now I'm not gonna. But the thing is, I'm not gonna vote for someone just because of their identity politics. You should vote for someone because of their. Um, <sighs> help save our county, Ed Day. Wow. I wonder, did Chris Day win? He's a dummy. He wants to... All of these political signs would be illegal. <laughs> you know. Wow, and, and Ed Day won. That's That also shows that... that uh, the block vote in in uh, Rockland County does not have strength in the county level unless there are. I mean, to vote for Ed Day is a really tra a traitor. Um, you know, what we really need to do is get someone to run in the Republican Party against Ed Day. Um, uh, the question is, can people from our community manage? to run the way that this um, the Sikh fellow did, you know. The Sikhs are, are uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for the Sikhs because they're, they're very down-to-earth people. They're very, you know, that's their religion. It's just to be be normal, basically. I mean, all of these, the thing is, is that all of these outer religious expressions are rather recent in the Sikh history. I, you know, I, I remember talking to, you know, an old classmate of mine from, from high school, and I, you know, I run into him, he, he owns a gas station, and, and I, uh, and, and I asked him, you know, which, which religion, he said he's Sikh, but he's not religious. He was asking me something about how to open, you know, legally to open a temple or something, and, and, and uh, how does that work, and, and, you know, but... He said, I'm Sikh, but I'm not religious. But I said, <laughs> I, I wanted to tell him when, when he said that, I said, you're being Sikh and not religious is probably much closer to what the Guru Nanak taught than what the later gurus taught and made it into a religion because the Guru Nanak was against religion, really, essentially. I mean, that's why they're not allowed to eat kosher food or halal food, you know. <laughs> but in any event... Um, even though I don't think kosher was really an issue in, in Punjab. Um, but I, it's all these things are interesting, but I, I, people, anybody who thinks that Donald Trump would be upset about that is just an idiot, you know, and people are really, I think really the left is using this whole narrative of, oh, Trump's a racist and this and that for their own political gain. I mean, this, this whole, like, look, you know, this... This is his, but this is yours campaign with de Blasio, you know. Come on, that's stupid. I mean, Trump is a, a regular New York City guy, you know. He's not a, he's not some some redneck, you know. And the thing is, is that these days, the quote-unquote rednecks are not rednecks either. The, you know, the more, there's much more um, racism and, and bigotry in the elitist left than there is in the, you know, true rural, um, you know, right. And the irony of, uh, like in Bloomingburg, that they use this imagery of rural community and rural heritage when these are all really people have a lot more in common with Donald Trump uh, calling themselves rural uh, ex than most Republicans have with Donald Trump. 
and most rural people have with Donald Trump. And uh, that's just the truth. All right. I mean, I love Donald Trump. I have no problem with him. I just, you know, I mean, he wasn't my first choice, but the way people demonize him, it's just silly. All right. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, comment. And thank you.